So the most common wavelength used in synthetic aperture radar is a C-band. And so we are back to typically a wavelength around 6 centimeter. And this electromagnetic wave, when it hits the ocean surface, it interacts with the surface and a part of the signal is now scattered back to the antenna. And how is that done? This is where we come into the scattering mechanism and it's called Bragg scattering. And essentially the Bragg scattering is nothing more than the linear relationship that takes place between the surface roughness of the ocean surface and the, electro the length of the electromagnetic waves. So if, if you are coming in with a look uh, angle of around um, uh, 30 degrees, it means that it, you will have sort of a, uh, a possibility to get waves on the ocean surface with physical wavelengths in the order of uh, seven, eight centimeters to cause a very strong Bragg scattering uh, regime. And this is what the, the SAR system wants to have. Well, a six to eight centimeter long wave on the ocean surface uh, is, is very quickly generated, but you need to have a little bit of wind there. So the wind that has to be present is typically in the order of two, three meters per second. As long as it's like that, it creates this six to eight centimeter waves, and we have the formation uh, uh, possibilities for the Bragg scatter. Then, of course, with increasing winds, you will start to understand that the roughness will sort of start to grow as well. But there will still be presence of these uh, six to eight centimeter long waves, and they will again be the dominant thing, sort of contributor to the signal. But now comes the secondary modulation of the signal, and that's associated with the other development of surface characteristics that occurs. Longer waves of 100 meter will continuously make a roller coaster for these three to six, uh, these six to eight centimeter waves, and through that you will have a modulation that leads to a pattern recognition of these long waves. So that's one evidence that, uh, that although it's a six to eight centimeter wave that creates the source of the back, back scatter, any modulation that we see around this at much longer are due to much longer waves, most likely. In surface current regimes, you can also cause uh, abrupt uh, sort of abundance of, of the steeper, shorter waves because of wave current interaction. And again, it is it, uh, again so that if you have a 10 meter wave that steepens uh, when it tries to cross a current front, the associated steepness will lead to again even more steepness of the six to eight centimeter waves and the SAR is catching it. So this is the Bragg uh, uh, scattering regime, is absolutely the, the major source of the signal over the ocean. When it comes to the uh, 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 geometry, um, the size of the images that we can sort of uh, have in one, in one uh, catch, this varies according to what sort of application or what you want to observe. If you only want to observe, um, let's say, waves, you don't need to image the entire ocean basin. You can just do some sort of what we call cat claw monitoring as a satellite is flying. And out of that, you are getting areas of 20 by 20 kilometer registered every 100 kilometers in, in different incidence angles. But out of that, you can now reconstruct the total global ocean wave field. If you want to do ship detection, that wouldn't necessarily be a good idea because you are leaving too much open, unimaged areas around. So when you want to do ship detection, you want to have a large SWOT and continuously registering as the satellite is flying. There are limitations to this, but this is the way it's done. And usually the maximum SWOT we can have is 500 kilometers. That means that the near part of the SWOT is imaged with an incidence angle around 20 degrees and the far part of the SWOT is imaged with an incidence angle in the order of 50 degrees. And here you need to, in the processing of the data, you need to correct for this, because every you know, uh, 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 signal or pixel value will be, be uh, influenced by the, influ uh, by the incidence angle. So since we know this already, the characterization of the incidence angle, we correct for that, and we smooth it out of the image. So when you see an image, you don't uh, have any more uh, the effect of this. So for wide SWOT systems to detect um, ships to also register oil spills and um, sea ice uh, conditions, 
um, eventually wind and, and surface currents. Uh, the, the amount of data that is acquired is enormous because of this high resolution and the fact that it's registering in amplitude and phase. This means that these sensors are not uh, operating on a full duty cycle. One orbit is 100 minutes, but they are not collecting data for more than 30 minutes of that orbit, if you go in these wide SWOT collecting modes. If you go in the short 20 by 20 kilometer, you can of course do that uh, through the entire orbit. But these are the constraints with these fascinating and fantastic sensors that we are not yet able to store all the data on the satellite and hence we have also to be dumping data to ground stations before we can collect more data. So this is the play that has to be done. But typically we get one third of an orbit always registered.